talk about risk factors that uh, increases the susceptibility of an individual to come down with an autoimmune disease. So there are a number of different uh, factors that increase the risk for autoimmune disorders. The first one I want to cover are genetic factors. So there's no doubt that autoimmune disorders run in families and, and that would suggest that there must be genetic factors that make someone more susceptible to infection. I'm sorry, <laughs> susceptible to autoimmune disorders. In um, almost probably 50% of the cases, those can be traced back to the HLA genes, specifically the genes that encode for MHG class one and two molecules. So these genes make these proteins that play a big role in antigen presentation and stimulating immune response in the adaptive immune system, B cells and T cells. And so let's talk about how these genes could play a role and how we know that they play a role in increasing the risk of individuals to come down with a genetic disorder. So um, let's follow the inheritance of HLA genes. And the example we'll talk about here is type 1 diabetes. So if you recall, the um, MHC, the major histocompatibility complex, actually refers to the sets of genes on chromosome 6 that encode for the uh, um, MHC1 alpha chain and the MHC2 alpha and beta chain. And so these genes have names like HLA A, B, and C, HLA D, Q, A, and B, HLA DR, A, and B, HLA DP, A, and B. And these are all clustered together on the chromosome 6 in a region called the MHC. And um, we've talked about it in the previously about HLA haplotype. So this refers to all the HLA genes that you inherit on one of your chromosome sixes. So you have two chromosome sixes, right? Uh, so here's an individual who has two HLA haplotypes, the brown haplotype and the blue haplotype. So all of those genes encode proteins that are involved in antigen presentation. So let's say there's another individual who's got this green haplotype and this yellow haplotype. So if these individuals meet, right, and now we've got to do a Punnett square, uh, individual, um, the first individual can donate either the brown allele, a brown um, haplotype or the blue haplotype. The uh, other individual can donate either the green haplotype or the yellow haplotype. And so we're doing a little Punnett square here, talking about inheritance. Now, uh, the reason we're doing this is to demonstrate the um, fact that uh, autoimmune disorders seem to be linked to which HLA haplotype you inherit. And we can see this when we look at sibling pairs and look at their uh, uh, risk of coming down with an autoimmune disorder that might run in a family. So just by random chance, uh, sibling pairs could inherit um, the same haplotypes from their parents or different haplotypes from their parents. So if you and your sibling inherited the exact same haplotype from mom and from dad, right, the odds of that happening are about 25%. Right? The odds that you and your sibling both have the brown um, haplotype from mom and the green haplotype from dad, what are the odds of that happening? 25%. The odds of any um, siblings inheriting the exact same haplotypes from their parents, 25%. What are the odds that you inherit one haplotype um, similar uh, to your sibling? Well, let's say you and your, you know, what are the odds you and your sibling both inherited the yellow haplotype? Well, half, 50%. If you look at the Punnett square, two out of the four, have the yellow haplotype, so the odds of sharing one haplotype with your sibling, 50%. What are the odds of sharing no haplotypes with your sibling? Well, if you uh, have the brown and green haplotype uh, and you share none with your siblings, then you must have the, uh, uh, or your sibling must have the blue and, let's say, the yellow haplotype. So the odds of that happening, again, 25%. So these are the odds that uh, individual sh uh, sibling pairs share haplotypes. In terms of autoimmune disorders, when individuals share more haplotypes, 
they are more likely to share the autoimmune disorders. So for example, with type, two, type 1 diabetes, if sibling pairs uh, inherit the exact same two haplotypes, they are at a, a greater than 50% risk of both having also diabetes, type 1 diabetes. With uh, sharing one haplotype, that's enough to give you a 37% chance of both sharing diabetes. And if you and your sibling do not have, do not share any haplotype, um, there is a very low risk that you and your sibling would both uh, suffer from type 1 diabetes. So the more HLAs you and your siblings share, the more increased your risk of um, suffering from an autoimmune disorder such as type 1 diabetes. So this allows scientists and geneticists to realize that HLA genes are risk factors for um, autoimmune disorder. They're not going to dictate if, whether or not you're going to get a dis an autoimmune disease, definitely, but they're definitely going to increase your risk. And we know that there are certain HLA genes that if an individual inherits, will increase their risk of an autoimmune disorder. So let's talk about some of them. Um, and let's again go back and look at the HLA or the MHC region of chromosome 6 where you inherit your HLA haplotype. And if you remember, you have um, these genes and th many of these genes are polymorphic. There are many versions of them. So which version you, in you inherit depends on what you um, can inherit from your parents. In the population, there might be hundreds or thousands of different alleles. And alleles have these strange names with numbers in them. So HLA, A, B, and C. Um, you might inherit these uh, alleles of each of them. But each of them is going to code for a protein that's going to have a very specific peptide binding motif and present a certain type of peptide with anchor residues. So you inherit on your haplotype your HLA, A, B, and C genes of a certain uh, types of alleles. You also inherit your... Uh, genes that code for the MHC class 2 molecules, and if you recall, they come in versions A and B because you have the alpha and the beta chain of MHC class 2. And let's look at the DQ um, genes. So there's DQA and DQB, and again, there are different versions in the human population, different alleles, so they're polygenic, or polymorphic, we should say. Um, so when clinicians and geneticists refer to the genes and the proteins that make up the MHC2 complex, um, these alleles that sort of pair together, uh, we give them names like DQ2 or DQ3 or DQ4. So they're just names that um, geneticists have uh, started to use to talk about these pairs instead of going right to the numbers. So this DQA and DQB gene, those numbers, encode four proteins that are going to make this type of HLA or uh, HLA2 or MHE2, which we would just refer to as DQ2, as, as opposed to throwing in all the numbers. Um, sometimes when you talk about HLA1s um, or MHE1s, you'll see numbers like A01 or B57 or B23 or C07. So these are just ways for clinicians and uh, scientists to uh, give the protein complexes a name. For the DQ genes, the DR genes, the DP genes, you also have these, these nom this nomenclature where you um, n might look at the gene numbers, the allele numbers, and give this complex a name like DR3. Uh, and so there's the DR3 uh, complex, this MHC class 2 complex. So um, the increased risk of autoimmune diseases most likely arises from the fact that many of these uh, HLA genes have the potential to present self-peptides. Uh, and if these self-peptides present um, to uh, T cells, then you are more likely to have an autoimmune response. Yes, we are supposed to have negative selection in the thymus, but that is not a perfect uh, process. So let's go through a couple of autoimmune disorders and the HLAs that uh, are linked to an increased risk. Um, of getting those autoimmune disorders. So we talked in a previous video about Graves' disease. In that the disease, the autoantigen is the TSH receptor. So individuals make antibodies to the TSH receptor. So to do that, you require um, antigen presentation. And there are uh, HLA genes, specifically the DR3 
genes that uh, if a person inherits increases the risk of an individual to get Graves' disease. Doesn't mean they're guaranteed to get it. Doesn't mean you need to have this DR3 to, to get Graves' disease. Some people get Graves' disease who don't have DR3. But we know that individuals who inherit the DR3 um, allotype have an increased risk of Graves' disease, presumably because the DR3 molecule will uh, preferentially um, or occasionally present the TSH receptor peptides. And if that occurs, then you can activate T cells, which will help B cells, which might also recognize the TSH receptor. So again, the, the uh, presence of the DR3 type in a person's genome increases the risk of Graves' disease. It won't cause it. Um, you don't need it. Other people get Graves' disease without it, but individuals who have DR3 have a higher risk of Graves' disease. For myasthenia gravis, uh, the autoantigen is the acetylcholine receptor, and again, this HLA DR3, uh, its presence in the genome increases a person's risk of getting this disorder. For lupus, uh, the autoantigens are DNA, histones, and ribosomes, and ribosomal proteins, ribonucleotide proteins, and there are HLAs that increase the risk of inheriting um, uh, this disease, lupus. Uh, HLAs DR3, DR2, and DR5, if individuals inherit um, certain versions of these HLAs, that increases their risk of lupus. It's not going to cause lupus, but will increase the risk, presumably because these HLAs do a really good job of presenting histone peptides or ribosomal protein peptides. Um, lastly, uh, celiac disease. That um, uh, is an is immune disorder where the immune system recognizes gluten peptides. This is more of a uh, hypersensitivity than it is an allergic reaction, or, or, or I mean, or more of a allergic reaction or hypersensitivity and less of a autoimmune reaction because gluten is not part of us. But again, um, for when individuals have these hypersensitivities, they are commonly associated with HLA-2 or MHE-2. And you, again, you can see HLA-DQ and HLA-D8. Individuals who inherit these versions of the HLAs are more likely to present gluten peptides, more likely to have an immune response against these proteins. So this video doesn't cover all uh, autoimmune disorders, but you can see that inheriting certain versions of HLAs and you can see very commonly it's HLA-2 or MHE-2. Those genes, uh, when you inherit certain versions of those genes, it increases the risk of autoimmune disorders, most likely because those versions of the HLAs present these self-peptides more often than other versions of HLAs.